In the last video I explained how to assemble a plinth, pedestal, podium or box and in this video I'm going to paint it. I'm now going to prime the MDF with PVA or wood glue mixed with some water. It's about 30% PVA and the rest water. I get my chopsticks. You can use a roller, but I'm going to use a brush. It's quicker with a roller. If you are using a roller, the secret to doing a good job is to start from the top, work your way down and stop. Don't roll up and always work to a wet edge. So as you're working, be systematic. I know it's boring and work your way around like that. You're going to need a few coats, okay? Especially with the top coat. But for now, got my brush and my PVA water mix, and I'm literally just going to paint it on. I'll put this board down so I don't ruin my table saw. Obviously, be considerate where you're working. Uh, some people have to eat there. The reason you do a primer first is it reduces the number of top coats you need. Um, this is obviously cheap, if not free, um, while the paint may cost a little bit more. That's one on that side. That's one on that side there. That's gonna help it dry a little bit and I won't get this stuck to the table. Okay, I've got some white emulsion paint, it's water-based. You wanna really make sure that you get the right paint to paint your plinth. Don't use oil-based paint. You don't want it to look like it belongs in a toilet. Um, and the main thing is this stuff will dry very quickly and you'll be done in a day. If you use oil-based, you'll be doing this for a few days, if not a week. And also oil-based stinks. You, it produces a lot more VOCs, volatile organic chemicals. Um, and it is noticeable, it's not nice to work with all base paints. It's also easier to clean the stuff up. Make sure you read the tin as well. If it says to stir it, stir it. If it says not to stir it, don't stir it. This one says to stir it, so I've got my chopstick. Give it a good mix. So, a little tip when it comes to using your paint tray. If you pop a bag over it like this, you can then pour your paint in. When you finish up, you don't have to wash the paint tray. You can just fold everything up and throw it in the bin. I don't know why they don't, don't put paint in bottles. It's like stupid. That will last a week or two, maybe even more. So I've left this drying for a little while. It's had a primer and a first coat. I'm now going to apply some filler to the nail holes. Just get normal wall filler. It takes about an hour or two to dry. Um, I would suggest not to use two part filler. That stuff is very smelly, has a lot of styrene in it. Uh, it's actually not very good for you. Uh, this stuff is more than adequate. And the reason I'm using this at this time is I want to minimize the amount of filler and sanding that I use and have to do. So I put 
just enough to flush fill any holes. The reason I'm flush filling, as I said, is to avoid having to do too much sanding. Still going to have a few more coats of paint to put on top. Combination of the filler, once it dries it will sort of dip in a little bit, but the paint will fill that gap up again. Flush fill all the way. Filling and painting is kind of an optical illusion. You're trying to create the effect of a even clean solid surface you don't actually need that you just need to think where's the light source coming from where can i see shadow and if you if you focus on those areas you will quickly get an even clean surface and the other thing to remember is no one's going to be looking at the plinth they're going to be looking at the thing that's on it so as long as it's not too bad you just want to deflect attention from the thing you just made to display the thing that is the focus of attention okay this is two coats of paint uh, sometimes filling and sanding and painting can take longer than actually building the thing that you're trying to make. Um, there's still a little bit of a lip, a gap. I didn't get it as perfect as I, I'd like. You can kind of see the seam there. This room is quite damp so it's not the best condition to make anything out of MDF. Um, Errors just seem to uh, manifest a little bit more easily, but this is the this is a good time to actually do the second sand. So where I can see a seam is where I'm going to concentrate. Okay, I've done several more coats of paint and it looks pretty good. I prefer to fill as I go along and then paint over with the following uh, coat um, just because it saves me on sanding time essentially. You don't have to sand parts which look fine. Um, the last thing you can do is add a shadow gap and you can do that a couple ways. You can stick a couple feet in, a bit of two by two or two by one, or make a slightly smaller box that you uh, glue in. And that just ever so slightly raises the box, so you get this kind of shadow like that. And you're essentially ready to put something on top. Thank you.